Hello and welcome everyone. This is Mace from Broctagon Studio from the Middle East Event Show and we are day two. I have with me here Ruslan Karimov. How are you? Hello. Thank you Mace for inviting me. It's amazing. Can we switch off the speaker? <laughs> because I can hear myself. This is for the people outside to oh, hear I see. you. It's all you our outside now. I see, I see, I see. Okay. Hear okay. You. Awesome. Okay. okay, let's go. Ruslan. So Ruslan is the founder of Mimic Digital and uh, Ruslan, we want to go into the depth of Mimic and what it is. So can you tell us more about Mimic? platform okay so mimic is uh, experiential content delivery platform uh, we are trying to enable creators uh, with the tools which allow them easily create different things it's related to the event industry specifically as well as well as to the streaming industry uh, whenever people are trying to deal with large audiences, whenever it's online, offline, we are trying to bring experiences right to them and it's in our DNA of mimic to help let's say professional creators or creators who want to deliver not just the basic content, but engaging content, experiential content, online and offline. For that, we built a lot of interesting tools. Some of them are uh, like a web builder, allows you to build websites in multiple languages, just using drag and drop interface. Mm -hmm. For video professionals, there are a lot of technical stuff, and we call it Video Toolkit, which allows you to take care of uh, a lot of necessities when it comes to the live streaming. And we are going to release soon one more tool, which is Metaverse Editor, which helps you to create the Metaverse uh, by yourself, right? Just using drag and drop. So no technical knowledge required, no coding, uh, a lot of fun, I think, while creating it, and then just taking it to your audience. That sounds awesome. And why was it created in the first place? What problems did it solve? Okay, like you don't know it, right? <laughs> <laughs> okay, it's been it's been a while uh, since we, I think, spoke as well about like why. And remembering, I think, old days, I think it still remained the same, right? Uh, I think that when the requirements came, let's say, when the world changed towards when most of your audience were uh, actually sitting online at home and uh, you still wanted to deliver a very cool experience and you were looking for the solutions and uh, Mimic was born originally as a virtual production, right? So we start uh, producing an unusual content and uh, of course it came with the technology because the scale had to be uh, massive, right? I mean, we were running event for 300,000 people, we were running event for 2,000 people, 5,000, 25,000. And you had to, I think, act very quickly and you had to use tools which allow you to assemble your content very quickly. But at the same time, uh, not at the cost of a quality. So you had to have a very nice quality and this is how Mimic started. So it was created as a tool to actually assemble your experiences online at a large scale. So it remained the same too and it's uh, very close to that DNA as well today. And it's just added more technology, more innovation like at this stage. And this is how it started. So back in time, it was a mimic stage. We were experimenting with uh, 360 environments. I mean, using different technology than we are what we use today. So we matured enough now to move to, I think, more advanced, more scalable stuff. And But uh, it was the need, the need for the tool, which easily allows you to assemble things online, right, for large audiences. I think that's what we are about. Yes, I believe it really did solve a lot of problems, especially in the restrictions, the physical restrictions, and we were part of that journey, and I see that evolved so much since it started. So if we are going to address the target audience for Mimic today, who, are, who is the target audience? I would love to say uh, everyone who can uh, drag and drop things <laughs> <laughs> online, uh, but I mean, realistically, yeah. I mean, like, let's say we are taking it step by step, and uh, today we are looking at um, experiential agencies, I think mostly. Uh, it's the event agencies. It's uh, streaming uh, studios which produce content, but they need a help uh, uh, and own actually a tool uh, within their own premises uh, to create those experiences without uh, looking uh, at the coders to code it for them, right? Mm -hmm. So having any, any, any agency which has a creative team Right, and uh, trying to build uh, unique, customized experiences online. I think those are ideal clients for us. And uh, those people we are uh, supporting at this stage and we are helping them to 
accommodate, let's say, their enable their clients and provide to their end clients uh, more sophisticated, interesting, and uh, customizable experiences. I think that would be the, say, the case for us. But as I said, like it's event agencies, experiential agencies, streaming studios. I think that's the first step when we are taking and targeting at this stage, trying to build the. Uh, creative network uh, of professionals. And do I need to be like tech savvy to be able? I know you said drag and drop a lot, but I just want to know like, is it that easy for me to use the platform knowing that maybe I'm not that technical or I don't have the techie background? Yeah. How often do you use PowerPoint? Oh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm the master of PowerPoint. Yeah. So, I mean, it's similar to the PowerPoint, right? <laughs> I mean, we have a little bit of tweaks. I mean, you normally fill the fields, uh, create a project in Mimic. Once a project is created uh, to build web pages, you drag and drop stuff uh, to stream video. I mean, definitely it's a bit more sophisticated. Uh, you just need to have a Vimix. You need to have certain things to upstream your RTMP, SRT streams. And then we take care of the rest, like CDN and transcoding. Uh, if you are building your metaverse, is like uh, I'm not sure if you're playing games. I'm not. I am, I'm hundred percent sure you are not. <laughs> so, but I mean, it's literally as well. Like you dragging and dropping stuff around, uh, fixing it, so you have metaverse live video, and when you control uh, that live video, I mean, in on the metaverse side, I think the biggest difference of our editor is gonna be that uh, we are gonna allow people like what we do on a web. Uh, experience side in our web experience builder uh, when you can control your environment on the go so while your audience is connected uh, let's say like you have 80,000 people audience and you, they are connected to a specific web page stage right and you are switching the channels taking them from one experience to another experience same way in the metaverse editor you will be able to switch on switch off items how does it help like let's say you have a gathering in your lobby in metaverse people avatars are walking around and at one point of time you kick off and you switch on uh, 3D object, or you switch on a live video, for example, right, so people can see it. So you are in the full control at any point of time of your environment, whenever it's a web experience builder or a metaverse builder. Okay, that's amazing. Good to know. And um, my question to you, because I've been through your website and I see that there is a partnership opportunity, so I want to know what is it that, you, uh, that Mimic is looking for in partners and how can they approach you? Yeah, so um, what our core is our core is actually to work with um, with professional creators, or let's say we call it profession creator, right? So everyone is welcome. Everyone is it's an open system, first of all. So we are trying to build with Mimic a tool which can be affordable for everyone to use. It's scalable, and uh, for that we are trying to build a network of professionals. Uh, then even when, when the clients, for example, even when the end client comes to our website looking at, oh, uh, yes, I do want to build using Mimic, uh, we have a list of uh, partners we are dealing with. Those partners are agencies, those partners are streaming production houses, virtual production houses. Sometimes it's just developers or designers, right, who can put together the interesting content. And in our team we have... Uh, a manager who's looking after all partners, Nicolin. So she's establishing a global network at this stage. So we have some partners in US like Vora Studios. We have local partners like Space2 and MCH Global. And with them we are, um, and we are looking for more partners to uh, to share because it's never enough. Uh, and it's it's a lot of requests which are, which are coming. And uh, for each client you have a specific um, each client has a specific necessity, right? Mm -hmm. And for each specific necessity, you need the right production house. You need, we, we, we as Mimic, we provide technology, but we don't actually produce our self content. Mm -hmm. We don't design content. Sometimes most of the clients in initial stages, we don't even need to produce content. We want to understand a specific uh, uh, points on what we're planning to do. So this is when the agency, for example, comes in place. Mm -hmm. Some clients will come into Mimic to just to have an understanding how to stream their videos. This is when our partners like Streamworks come in place and they actually educate the client what they can do. And those relationships uh, between our partners and the end client will grow between our partners and the end client like for a long time. And Mimic can be that back-end base which provides the technology for uh, both parties. And I want to ask you a question about how does Mimic differentiate from the other platforms that are in the market now? This is a tricky question. Oh, is a oh my question. God. <laughs> okay. I think I think the main difference is uh, first of all, it's an open technology. It's affordable. I'm not trying to create a packages, right, and uh, subscriptions. I'm 
uh, using a system which is pay as you use. Uh, so you just pay for what you use in general. Uh, second of all, uh, our main um, approach is to make it accessible from as many devices as possible. And sometimes it at the cost of how it looks. So you need to be very specific about your look, right? So for example, there are different technologies today in the market, like pixel streaming, for example. Yes, you do, uh, you produce those in Unreal Engine with amazing, uh, beautiful um, imagery, like in movies. But at the end of the day, if you come down to uh, the actual uh, usage of it. I mean, can you open it on a mobile phone? No, you cannot. Can you invite there uh, hundred thousand people or even like five thousand people? No, you cannot. I mean, like if even if you can, I mean, it will cost you like around one point five million dollars uh, to run one single event. So I'm not looking towards that uh, direction. I'm looking towards uh, WebGL uh, accessible uh, spaces, accessible venues and very easy to build uh, tools with a lot of functionality. But at the same time, we are pushing the limits of the quality. And at this stage, I think a lot of WebGL stuff can look uh, close to uh, what Unreal Engine can uh, achieve. And we are working on few venues. We released our three venues at this stage, specifically for event professionals, like lobby, uh, auditorium, uh, product showroom. We are finishing up two more, uh, which are targeted towards exhibition um, organizers. So we can actually take uh, advantage of building uh, exhibition in the metaverse. And the next step for us is gonna be to start experimenting. And I think in uh, end of July, we will release our metaverse editor with additional two more venues which are gonna be very, very sleek uh, with a lot of beautiful like reflections, lobbies, which are gonna be targeted mostly towards corporate uh, events. And yeah, this is where we are this today. This was actually my next That's question. <laughs> Just wanted what's, to, what's next? I wanted to ask about like, what is the future for Mimic? But I think you covered, unless there are some points that you haven't mentioned yet. Yeah, I mean, the future of Mimic, it's a lot more than just July, right? I mean, we have our schedule in, uh, for the next two years. And uh, it's we have three pillars in Mimic. Uh, one is a web experience builder, uh, which is a real-time web. Mm -hmm. So we are helping uh, online experiences to be controlled in real time and be alive. So for that, we are planning to integrate a lot of technologies. Like we are... Uh, Breakout rooms are going to be released, I think, early July. And then we'll have a uh, real-time 15,000 people uh, stage. So it's similar kind of to Zoom call, but it's on a web. And it can accommodate 15,000 people right, right on a spot with a lot of extra interactivity, which I'm not going to reveal yet. You will see it when it comes out. Uh, when the next step for us is end of July, we are releasing the Metaverse, uh, uh, Metaverse Editor, which allows you, like again, quickly select your venue, jump in, drag and drop, build, control, invite your users, and etc. The steps after that, uh, we, are, we are looking towards uh, more um, simpli simplifying the flow, for example, of creation, right? Whenever it's on a video site, whenever it's on a web experience site, whenever it's in a metaverse site. On metaverse site, potentially, we are looking at adding, of course, more venues. It's going to be a continuous process of giving uh, more flexibility to people, uh, having an item store, and uh, then uh, we are looking towards, uh, in Metaverse, we are gonna look towards uh, more engaging experiences, mm -hmm. uh, like collaborative experiences. So mm -hmm. what can you do together? Because by just being present in Metaverse, it doesn't make sense, right? I mean, you need to do something together. I mean, we have a few options. Uh, we will have a few options in the end of July. And more, I think, is gonna be towards the end of the year when it will be like fully, um, I think, I mean, we can call it like engagement uh, in Metaverse kind of module, right? Like a feature. So we'll, we'll keep on adding engaging, engaging experiences inside. Uh, after that, it's uh, Web3. Uh, we will provide an NFT access. I'm just looking towards a type of uh, users that are mostly using our system today. Uh, I mean, most of the content still for us, I think 60, 70% of content is delivered using a video. Mm -hmm. Right, so that's a very different type of interaction. NFTs are gonna land, NFTs are gonna land as utilities. So it's gonna be an access in a system. That's gonna be the step, step one. And second step is gonna be the NFTs uh, activations, right? When you will finish certain challenges and you get your, uh, your freebie. Mm -hmm. And when you will have your own wallet to access it and etc. Mm -hmm. 
Okay. But I'm more stuff. I mean, like I have over like 60 features last time I counted. Wow, and that's I keep amazing. On going, yeah. It's all exciting, Ruslan. I know that they've, you've been working on it and it's come to life and it's so beautiful. I'm so happy that you are here. And if anyone so wants <laughs> to uh, try a demo of uh, Mimic, let's say, or they want to reach out for partnership opportunities, what yeah. would be uh, the means of communication or how do they reach out? Yeah, I mean, uh, we are, we are going to kick off in the uh, end of next week. Okay. Uh, we are going to kick off a new website, uh, which will make it more clearer for partners what the path to follow. And uh, to use it, we are uh, now in uh, on our platform, we are creating two packages because we saw a lot of people who are coming in. We had a gated uh, entry before with a credit card and a lot of people kind of were like, uh, we want to experiment Specific. more. Yeah, yeah, yeah we want to experiment true. more. And we created two packages now. One we call Explore. Mm -hmm. So you don't actually need to add your credit card. So you just jump in, you play around with stuff, not with all stuff, uh, but with most of the stuff you yes. can play around. And then uh, you have a construct package when you are convinced that it's a system to use, then you can link your credit card, but again, you don't pay anything, mm -hmm. right? You just link your credit card and then you uh, understand our pricing model. Mm -hmm. And uh, then you start using the system and then you pay according to the usage you have. Mm -hmm. So to understand the pricing model, this is when uh, our manager, uh, partner manager, Nicolene, comes into place. Mm -hmm. So you can book on uh, that website. You will be able to book a session with her. Mm -hmm. So she will uh, explain to you what the partner program is, how to onboard uh, into our platform. Mm -hmm. And we also designing a program for our partners, how uh, to deal with the end clients. Because I understand that the challenge today with the end clients is literally the understanding what technology can do, right? Yeah. And I think this, what we are taking for us with Nicolene as a challenge, uh, to educate our partners. So well, those partners can educate the end clients on uh, what, what they're in the technology today, let's mm -hmm. see. And if anyone wants to reach Nicolene, do we have any contact information that we can show t to the audience? Kay. Yeah, I, <laughs> I will, yeah. Okay, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> thank, I've sent the slide, yeah. <laughs> you can send cool. the slide. <laughs> oh my okay. God. Yeah, I so want you those can, glasses As you too. can see, we have Ruslan's email, we have Nicolene's email, and uh, a co-founder and founder of Mimic. And we have channel of partnership is Nicolene. Um, Ruslan, do, I, do you need to add anything that I haven't asked today about Mimic? Let's go party. Let's go party. <laughs> All right. Thank you very much. And thank, thank you, you guys. No, everything is cool. I mean, thank you for, thank you for inviting me. <laughs> Amazing Broctagon product. Again. Love it. Really love yeah. it. <laughs> okay. Thank you all. Thank you, Ruslan. Thank you. See thank you very much. Thanks, Mace. Yeah.